when we left off, we had just taken possession of our new boat, Yoringa, and were excited to get to work and tackle one big project, pulling the mast for new standing rigging. Well, this morning we have Chris from CC Rigging here with us. He is helping us de-rig. He's the one that's going to be doing our new rigging for Yoringa here. Right now we have all of the fittings and hardware and everything off of the mast, like the boom, the bang, the spinnaker pole, all that good stuff. And he is just marking all of our stays and loosening up the turnbuckles, getting it ready to be pulled tomorrow. It's a half inch turnbuckle. Mm -hmm. Um, but the but the pinhole for your chain plate is five eight, so that's okay. a five eight pin. Okay. So take a look at the what the what's so been done here. It's kind of washed it out. It's kind of rounded it out, right? Yeah. Away. So so, so the pin, um, it's this you know this doesn't make it really uh, mm -hmm. any stronger, and in fact that's not much tear out. Mm -hmm. um, and what you would like to see um, is uh, close to the diameter of the mm -hmm. pin and tear out as well. So um, because of the fact that they're five eighths. Uh, pins and, and this is 5 16 wire so we can have a, a half inch turnbuckle or a 5 8 turnbuckle since we've already got 5 8 pin here and a 5 8 pin at the top mm -hmm. we're gonna do a 5 8 turnbuckle. Mm -hmm. These toggles and where where they can fail is uh, on these straps on the top so uh, one of the things that I've taken to doing um, on these toggles is when they go together we're going to put Tef gel right here okay. and right here yeah. and, and get it all happy with Tef gel so that'll really help um, keep any kind of corrosion down there. Mm -hmm. And then also when the clevis pin goes through, we want to Tef gel, we that. Want to tef -gel all that. Mm -hmm. So Tef gel is kind of messy, so you want to be a little bit sparing with it, put it in just the right spots and then mm -hmm. wipe away the excess so it doesn't attract a lot of dirt and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, these threads, of course, want some kind of grease. Taking off the mask boot and mask boot tape, and then thanks, mate. What does it call underneath? Uh, I forget spreader. What do they call the the mask partners? The partners. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's the, that's the word I was looking for. Sure. Yeah. Looks like a little wedge, basically, right? Like mask wobbly now. Taking off this turnbuckle. So for those of you that don't know. Probably the most important thing on a sailboat is the standing rigging, or the rigging, which this is known as the standing rigging. It's not in motion, it's not running rigging, which a lot of the lines are that run your sheets and your halyards. This is what keeps your boat in one piece, basically. This is what holds up the mast. It's the most critical part on a boat when you're sailing, because if it fails, you're probably going to have a bunch of metal fall down on top of you. So we're loosening it, we're going to take off the turnbuckles, pull all these wires out so it'll just be the mast kind of sitting there by itself. Uh, we'll leave a couple attached just to, to brace it until uh, Chris here will go up the mast and he'll attach a strap to it, which is attached to a crane, and we'll pull the mast out. It was a very strange feeling to disconnect all of the rigging piece by piece. The headstay was the last to be detached, and then Chris was hoisted up by the crane to attach the strap to the mast. Okay. Once the mast was hoisted, we neatly tidied up all of the rigging to stop it from swinging around, and then did the same with the electrical wires. You need extra hands up there, Chris, or not? the mast out of the boat, our next step was to de-rig it. 
detaching all of the rigging, taking off the spreaders so it would be a smaller footprint in the boatyard, and removing or tidying up all of the halyards and lines. Then we took a good look at two areas of concern. The base of the mast where it had been in contact with the mast up and the mast head which had a bent spinnaker crane. Yeah, we can straighten it back up. It could have been uh, they ran aground and they, were, and they ran off the spinnaker halyard to kind of catch off or something. Yeah, yeah. Either aluminum or stainless steel plate. Right. Stainless yeah. steel is going to be, you know, better. But get it all the way back so it engages the fort more of the mm -hmm. mast head. Mm -hmm. We can do gussets on the top and more or less abandon, you know, yep. from here out. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to episode one of Hillary and Ty make a mess of a boat. <laughs> We've got everything here. We're trying to unpack a van full of way too much stuff and sort through what we want. We're also trying to continue with our uh, re-rig. Well, we have almost everything unloaded into the boat here. It is a complete mess still, but it's kind of coming together. But let us show you how we're going with the mast step. It's better than we expected, which is really good. Our rigging's completely uh, finished in the shop and we're just waiting on some other things to go on in the mast to finish up the wiring and, and get everything back on there basically. So hopefully within less than a week actually we should have our mast back up. But down here's the mast step, I'll show you what's going on here. The main one to look at first of all is, if you haven't seen already, this was cut out. So this is the original floor here. There was no access, which was the hardest part. There was no access to this floor. Now we have a little hatch that was cut out by the shipwright. And that lets us get much better access here to the mast step. Uh, I can pull this floor up as, as well if we need to, but you can see what, what we're gonna show you from here anyway. Our biggest problem was with the boat here, which we were worried about, was the condition of the mast step. And because we did not have access to this area at all, and of course there was a mast in here at the time, the only access we had was through here, so it was very difficult to get in here. We were using a camera to kind of get a look. And we were, all we were getting was little bits of rust, which is off the side of this here. Once we actually got it out, we could clean this up and see much better. And we were able to see that the mast step is in really good shape. Uh, so this is the actual mast step, which is like a cast aluminium. These are the original bolts, which look great, but we're going to probably change these anyway and just put new fasteners in. But they look perfect. They came out clean and the threads in here look clean, which is probably the most important part to make sure there's no corrosion in here. The corrosion we were expecting to find doesn't really seem to exist. Most of that was just on this little elevated section here, which all it's doing is holding this tie down. So this tie down rod is, um, I guess you could call it like a reverse compression post. This is actually pulling the deck down to stop the deck from uh, popping up with the tension from the halyards and just everything else up there. So we've loosened that, that comes down to here. Uh, Chris here did a good job cleaning this up and uh, grinding it back to bare metal. You can see the shiny steel there. It's like a half inch thick steel. This is solid, so it, we're not too worried about that and he's not too worried about that. Um, the mast step was so clean, these bolts came out quite easily. I think Chris put a little bit of heat on the first bolts, and then, uh, but it came out fine and the other bolts came out without any heat at all. And then here you have the mast step. So that's the bottom of it. This is the original 35 year old mast step, which is in amazing shape. There's very little corrosion on this at all. And then you can even see under the step here, very little issues. So what happened was here, they've actually glassed over this step, which has helped insulate it and protect the step and the, the step here and also the base quite a bit. And again, the threads and the fasteners came out without any signs of corrosion, really. So this has got a lot of life left in it. And our choice here with discussions with Chris, uh, the rigger, is not to really go to all that effort right now. That we've probably got a good, you know, 20 plus years still uh, of life out of this. It'll have to be done at some point. So this is going to go back in. Uh, Chris is going to, I believe he's just going to probably put in a thickened epoxy here and just kind of level this out and give it a nice level playing field. 
and then this will probably get set in. I believe he was talking about setting it in place with uh, some 3M uh, 4000, 4200, something like that uh, in place here. But other than that, yeah, we're, we're in good shape. So we're excited. That was probably our biggest worry. We're excited to get the mask back on and go sailing. So these are, I don't actually know the name of these. Basically they're the little plates where your halyards exit the mast so there's no chafe. And they are stainless steel, the mast is aluminum. I don't want the two different metals touching because that will create corrosion. So this is like a little insulating tape that I'm putting on the back of it to insulate it. Putting that head, new head stay in through the furler. So Chris showed me was to basically pull on apart each of these junctions. I'll show you in a minute the inside, but there's just a little connector piece. And then if you see the little bushing in here, you can see that. And if that looks all clean and not worn, we're just going to go ahead and put it back in. Turn this to lock it in. Place the wire in it. And you're putting it back in with something? Red Loctite. So it won't back out by itself like it did that one time on Varuna. A portable bandsaw or something of that nature is that the um, it doesn't heat up the strands. Yeah. So if you use a cutting disc, yeah. it totally heats up the ends of the strands and makes them blue. It no longer is it stainless steel there, mm -hmm. and that will rust. Let's uh, the tools laid out. Our new rigging was done with all swage fittings, with the exception of the head stay which Chris fitted with the mechanical stay lock fitting after it was fed through the foil for the furler. As for the masthead, we had a metal worker re-weld the bent, fatigued spinnaker crane, then fabricate a heavy-duty reinforcing plate that bolted onto the masthead. With all of the rigging work done, we worked to reassemble all the components that we had removed when we pulled the mast, then got to fitting the new standing rigging in place. As we went, we coated all the pieces in Tef gel, wiping off the excess after it was together. Finally, everything was prepped and ready, and it was time to call in the crane. Oh, 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 come on. <laughs> oh. Here it You're there, that's it. To re-step the mast, we basically repeated the same process we did pulling it, but in reverse, reattaching the head stay, then the shrouds, before Chris went up with the crane to detach the strap, leaving the boat and rigging to support the mast all on its own. The boat is a mess. We kind of had things cleaned up and put away and put together, and now it just looks like the boat threw up and exploded everywhere. <laughs> There's not a single place to stand to or sit. Quick. It does go back together, but it is a messy boat at the moment, but that's the way things go usually when you are working on projects. 
I don't know. Replacing the batteries and I'm not exactly sure what we're doing. We put in new charge controllers because the we just like the Victron ones. They seem more user friendly and more customizable. So we swapped those out and put in the battery monitor as well, so we can actually because there's no the load shunt on here didn't seem to be at the battery, so that you still weren't capturing all the loads. And then we're changing out the batteries with these used, um, I guess they're LifePo batteries. They're a form of lithium with magnesium in them. Uh, pretty stable, pretty rugged. And we have disconnected our battery combiner to hopefully have it so the house bank charges only off of solar and bypasses the alternator. That's the plan, but I'm not sure about that one. As we finished our battery installation, all we could think of was getting off the dock, out of town, and being out sailing again which would happen in just a few days' time after we put the boat back together. But more on that next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please take a moment to give us a thumbs up and click the bell to subscribe. Until next time!